Suffrage Wagon Cooking School Suffrage Wagon Dot Org Hey folks, Jeff Cutting here and I'm at the Suffrage Wagon Cooking School today to guide you through making roast corn in memory of Grandma Edna who fundraised the suffrage movement by canning corn, selling it, and teaching classes about canning and organizing. Corn. That's right. Corn on the cob. For years and years I know people that have been going to those carnivals and saying to themselves, how do they get that corn to taste so good? But when I put it on my barbecue, it never comes out like that. Well, today, I'm going to show you how to do it. Not only am I going to show you how to make that corn the way they do, but I'm going to give you a secret little recipe from me, yours truly, to make your corn the most mouth-watering corn anyone's had this summer. So while we're here, let's do this. We're going to get in my kitchen, and let's make ourselves some corn on the cob. Clear it out my sink, wash it out, and I'm going to put some, some cold water in there. And I'm going to let these go ahead and fill up with water. Now, if you want to make a big barbecue and you want to make a lot of corn, you can fill your sink usually up between 12 and 15 years of corn. Today, I'm just going to make three. Now, a couple things to mention. This works the way I'm showing you in three different ways of cooking. One, grilling. Two, oven roasting. And three, putting it in a campfire. Those are the ways to cook corn on the cob. If you want to boil it, join the rookies. Boiling corn is not the way to go. You get rid of all of its nutrients, you destroy its flavor, and guess what? It gets mushy. So we're letting that water fill up, let the corn soak, and this is important, for at least 10 minutes before we go to the next stage. Okay, <clears throat> we're back in action here. I've let my corn sit and soak for about 10 minutes now. You can always tell if it's soaked enough because if you feel the top and you can feel water in there, it's completely soaked. So that's what you want. Also, when you go and pick your corn, make sure you see the ears looking like this with the little straw out in the front and then it's got a little straw on the back. Those are usually a good indicator that that's a freshly picked ear. I want you to have a real close look at this. If you start seeing roots growing out of there, this corn's been sitting for a while. And that is not good. Don't pick that ear because it's mushy to begin with. Let's get moving. I'm going to go ahead and start preparing my corn. Alright, so I have my soaked corn. I'm placing it on a large sheet of oil. Don't be fooled. You hear a lot of people saying peel back the, um, the corn ear husks and put flavoring in it. Don't do it. Keep everything as the way nature intended it. Also, very important, make sure the water content is very firmly in place. You're going to roll the ear around in the foil. You're not going to put anything in the foil, okay? And you're going to simply crumple it all up and twist it. So it looks like that. Don't leave any opening for the corn to breathe. Don't pull holes in it. Don't do anything. Leave it just like that. Then we're going to put it in a preheated oven of 375 degrees. Just simply open up the oven and go ahead and put the corn inside. 15 minutes. We're coming back. Okay, so we're going to take some seasoning now. I'm going to put a tablespoon of kosher salt in there. And then I'm going to crack the peppercorn about five times. So now your bowl should look like that. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a few things in here. But you can do whatever you want. I'm going to add just about a teaspoon of sugar. I'm going to add a teaspoon of blackened seasoning or Cajun seasoning, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to get a stick of butter. So here we go. Okay, so here is the sugar. Put that in there, okay? Now remember, the batch that we're making here with this butter is going to be enough to do 12 ears of corn. So everything you're seeing me do, just if you're gonna do it with one corn or two corns or three corns, just reduce the amount that you're putting into the bowl 
exactly the amount that I'm saying right now to a third of the recipe, okay? Okay, so I'm only making three ears of corn, so I'm using a third of a stick. If you were going to use the whole dozen, you'd use a whole, whole stick. I'm going to put that in with here, and then we're going to microwave it. Okay, so I've put the butter in there. I've put a little more uh, Cajun seasoning in there, and I also added a little bit of garlic salt. Uh, but like I said, whatever your flavors are, whatever you'd like, do it like this. You put it in the microwave and just melt it till the butter is melted. Okay, I'm just doing it for about 30 seconds. That'll be enough time for the butter to be melted. Once the butter is melted, we'll go get our corn. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. Now I'm going to use what I call a slather stick. Um, and I'm just going to mix all of the beautiful butter and that seasoning all together and make that awesome little butter sauce. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you what they do at the fair and at the carnival and, and all that stuff to make your corn even better than this, okay? What they're going to do is they're going to get a container similar to this as long as a, an ear of corn. They'll, we'll just say that this is the corn. They'll fill this up to about right here with butter and then they'll just dip the corn in there covering your corn completely and then pulling it out turning it upside down and giving you your corn on the cob. That's how they get that flavor to be dispersed exactly the way that you should have it. But I'm going to show you how to do it with just the three we have and then you can decide if you want to make that much butter because you're going to make that much corn. Okay so we're going to go ahead and pull our first ear of corn out of the oven. Ooh, that's going to be hot. That's hot, 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 hot. And remember, this can go any way, the grill, the fireplace, or your oven. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you what kind of steam's coming out of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a hot ear of corn, people. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to peel off the husk from the corn. You, you want Okay, so you want to get rid of this kind of stuff off the corn. If you want to serve the corn like this, you can. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to break this off. And now remember, once you've taken that off and you've taken the husk off, this corn is going to get cold fast. So just baste that little puppy. Turn it over. Continue to baste it. So you get that flavor everywhere in the corn. Oh yeah, that's going to be tasty. Just turn it over one more time. And see this way, this way you're not, you know, putting too much salt on one side, not enough on the other. Now you've got yourself a perfectly seasoned, perfectly buttered, beautiful corn on the cob. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you your very own flavored corn on the cob. Enjoy your barbecue, enjoy your holiday, but most important, Look for those luscious kernels to be plump and moist when you pull them out that husk. And that's when it's time to eat that corn. Mmm. Awesome.